Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about the Mayan calendar and what date it was actually pointing to. So this class is going to be the biblical correction. In other words, what date would the Mayans had come up with if they had been using biblical times instead of pagan times? We know that they were a pagan society and in their long count calendar, they used almost random numbers to come up with their dates and their months and their years and such. Like for instance, they used the number 20, whereas we used the number 10. So their calendar really didn't have months or weeks or anything like that not even whole years. That's why I say it was kind of random. But you can expect no less from a pagan calendar. I mean, it wasn't like they were using the Book of Enoch or anything like that to understand how biblical times work, which would have been important when it comes to what they were trying to predict. Man-made calendars are good for man-made stuff. I mean, man can determine when he wants to knock down the Twin Towers or when he wants to elect a president or the date that he wants to assassinate a president or anything like that. But when it comes to our father and his timeline, no man-made calendar means anything. Not the Gregorian calendar, the Chinese calendar, not even the Jewish calendar means anything when it comes to divine things. We have to use the sacred calendar which is only one way of determining dates. With all of these calendars around the world, we get confused thinking that we can just choose or pick the one we like or the one we choose to believe in and just run with it as if it matters. No, we have to go with the biblical way of keeping time if we want to understand anything prophetic. If we want to predict the timing of anything that man doesn't control, we're going to have to use our father's time, which the Mayans didn't do. Like we said, they were a pagan society and so they used pagan dates. But in this video, we're going to use the same principle that they did. In other words, we're going to use the same type of method that they did, except we're going to insert biblical dates and biblical timelines, replacing their pagan dates and pagan timelines. Now, let's go ahead and start looking closely at how the Mayans came up with that date, December the 21st, 2012. We see here in this document from Unity Corps is talking about five cyclical periods. They have the Ken, the Widow, the Tun, the Katun, and the Baktun was what the Mayans actually called these five cyclical periods. And we see they correspond to a day, 20 days, 360 days, 7,200 days, and 144,000 days, which to me seems like the most important period out of all of this. Maybe they was trying to tell us something with this 144,000 days. But even though that looks divine, it looks like it could be inspired in some way, it actually means nothing when it comes to biblical days. It's just 144,000 days, just like six days is 144 hours. There's no biblical timelines associated with 144,000 days at all. So even though it looks good, it actually means nothing. And it's the reason why their December the 21st, 2012 date came and left without doing anything other than drawing people's attention to it. But like I said, what we're going to do is we're going to go in and actually put in the biblical cyclical periods, replacing what they have here with what the Bible talks about. And what we learn is that the only thing that the biblical calendar and the Mayan calendar have in common is one day, one 24 hour period. And since biblical time is on the 60 system instead of the 20 system, we end up with a month at about 29.5 days, or almost 30 days makes up a month where the Mayans month would have been 20 days and 18 of those 20 day months would have gave them what they call a ton 
or a tune, which is close to a year, 360 days. But when it comes to the sacred calendar, we know that our year is actually 364 days long. There's many people that want to use a biblical year's 360 days, but we have to use what scripture talks about. And in Enoch 1, it talks about the sacred year, which is 364 days. And then in Enoch 2, where it's talking about the tropical year, it mentions that it's 365 and a quarter days long. Those are two different years, the tropical year versus the sacred year. But when you know how they work, they actually end up saying the same thing. A 364 day sacred year actually is the same as a 365 and a quarter day tropical year. Now, like I said, you just have to know how all of that works and we cover it in many, many videos. So the next cyclical period is the Jubilee year or the Jubilee cycle, which is 49 years long, not 50 years long. The Jubilee year actually falls in year one of the Jubilee cycle. In other words, year 50 is the same as year one. The Jubilee cycle is only 49 years long and a time which we learn in the book of Daniel is 10 times that or 70 times seven years, which is 490 years. So that's what the Mayans calendar would have looked like if they were using biblical times instead of just random numbers. And just for comparison, I'll put these times up here, comparing what the biblical periods look like compared to those pagan time periods, as you see right here. The next thing we need to talk about is when their year one was, when their calendar actually started and for some reason, if you go back in time to the beginning or what year one is using their math, you come up with the year 3114 BC as their year one. But when you look in biblical times, adding up the dates from Adam and forward, like you find there in Genesis chapter five and Genesis chapter 11, you see that that year, 3114 was actually during a time of Methuselah. Enoch would have been walking around, Methuselah would have been there, but that was the time before Lamech, who was Noah's daddy. So in other words, it's just a random time in human history. The humans had been around for almost a thousand years before we got to the year 3114 BC. So that date was definitely not the beginning of the creation of man or anything like that at all. In fact, when we use this same information that's found in just about every Bible, you can just add it up. You can actually use this table if you want to go and double check the numbers we have here, which tell us that the year of creation of Adam was the year 3973. But that was not the first human born here on the planet. The first human born here on the planet, which would have started human history, was Cain. Cain would have been the first human with a belly button or the first human born on the planet. We can go to the book of Jubilees in chapter four and we can find out that Cain was actually born in the year 66 and on Monday which would have been 66 years after the creation of Adam, that would have started the clock on human history. So in order to figure out when was the first human born on our planet, what we can use is the information from our Messiah, whose first advent was in 28 AD, and go back 4,000 years because of the prophecy. We know that the Messiah was supposed to come at exactly 4,000 years after the creation of Adam. And then we have to remember to take away another year because there was no year zero. And what we find is that Adam was created in 3973 BC. And then we start to go forward 66 years, putting the birth of the first human in 3907 
which should have been the date that the Mayans used. That should have been their starting point. But like we said, they was doing some pagan stuff. So I guess they could have chose anything they wanted. But since we're trying to do it from a biblical perspective, that's the date that we will have to use. That's the only date that we can use. We can't choose random dates like they did. We have to use 3907 BC as our start date. And then we learn that humans are given a certain amount of time from this date, actually 120 jubilee cycles or 12 periods, 12 times, which is 5,880 years. Remembering to add back that year because there was no year zero puts us at the end of those 120 periods or 120 jubilees in the year 1974. So 1974 would have actually corresponded to what we read in the book of Revelation chapter 8 when the seventh seal was opened and began a period of silence for a half an hour. And then in the apocalypse of Abraham, in about chapter 28, we find that an hour during this time is 100 years. So a half an hour would be 50 years. So we would add 50 years to 1974 and end up in the year 2024, which would be the date for the fulfillment of any of the prophecies that the Mayans were talking about, if they had anything else right other than the numbers. Replacing just their numbers with biblical facts takes us to the year 2024, the winter solstice of the year 2024 for any prophetic fulfillment of what they were talking about. So what date was the Mayans trying to point to? Well, if you look at it with the whole 50 years added, it would end up with 12 times one Jubilee cycle plus one year, which would take us to the winter solstice of the year 2024. But without the extra year in there and having only one Jubilee cycle would mean the earliest date would have been the winter solstice of the year 2023 or later on this year. But I have no reason to doubt Abraham was very precise in the 100 year count being an hour, which means that we can expect this transition period or whatever it is that they were prophesying about to occur sometime around Christmas of the year 2024, which will be right toward the end of the Jubilee cycle, the 121st Jubilee cycle. But we'll cover this more in other videos. So if you got something you can add, please put it below so that we can consider your information and what you have to say going forward.